Good morning. First of all, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the kind invitation of Jerry. He's tried to invite me for several years now, and uh, fortunately I had to decline. But finally, <laughs> I could come and I have to say I'm not very much of the atmosphere, the open mindedness of this uh, crowd. So thank you again. So uh, I will explain to you what we what we do is water molecules to explore the brain. So there are basically two parts in my talk. First, I will, I will show how I use water um, to get some information. And the actor is a passive molecule in this case. And in the second part of my talk, uh, I'll give you some information about how water might be a, an actor of brain function. So, you must well, everything I will talk about is about MRI. So um, I'm not sure that all of us uh, know well what is MRI. So very briefly, I give you a quick idea about uh, what is MRI. So the idea is to put somebody in a very strong magnet to fill with you. So I'll make between 0.1 and 7 Teslas, even higher as I will show you. And with uh, this magnet, um, we get a magnetization of atom nuclei. And uh, the nucleus of interest for us is hydrogen proton uh, for several reasons. First, because for the magnetic properties it is the best optimized. And then, of course, because the proton and hydrogen is part of the water molecule. Um, and there are so many water molecules in the body that means that we get the, the best signal. So, everything you see with MRI uh, is obtained from uh, the hydrogen nuclei of the water molecule. So in order to, um, to get images, it's not enough to have a magnetization of nuclei. We have a look also to use radio frequencies, which are used to, uh, to modify the magnetization of the photons. And by doing that, again, uh, I don't give the details, we get beautiful images like that. I'm not sure you have seen uh, any of them. So the white matter, gray matter, and the vessels, you see really nice details. And the contrast also the images is just given by the relaxation of the magnetization of the hydrogen nuclei. So, what I mean is that uh, we send a very brief pulse of radio frequency, then the magnetization disappears, and the magnetization goes back to the steady state in just a few hundreds of milliseconds. So, the contrast you see here is related to the speed at which magnetization occurs. And you see that there are big differences, for instance, between gray and white matter. But we still don't understand today why. It is related to, um, to the nature of the, of the molecular content of gray white matter, but of course there is no explanation. And with this, um, okay, it's working here. we can get really beautiful images of the anatomy of the body. You can see, for instance, say, uh, here the, uh, the carotid the reason of the vessels. Um, we can see also the real time imaging. Probably what's going on now in your stomach after you have breakfast. So, a lot of movements, and, and in real time, you can see also the heart beating and so on. And the object of interest of my talk is that we can see uh, the brain. So, I'd like to point out that those images that you see are virtual images from the magnetization of the water protons. We tend, they are so beautiful images that we forget that they, we forget that they quickly. But we should keep in mind that what we see is the magnetization of the water bottles. Okay, now I switch to uh, the main uh, topic of my talk, which is water diffusion MRI, measuring diffusion of water molecules in the brain. So the, st the story starts a long ago, uh, back in uh, 1900. Uh, at the time, uh, the exit, and I'm sure you will like this, uh, <laughs> this idea. Um, at that time, molecules or atoms were not really accepted by everybody. That looks strange today, but that was the case. And there was a theory, um, which I call the kinetic theory of heat. So if there are molecules moving, and because of the heat, um, uh, they, would, they have some internal energy. And so that was the kinetic theory, and some scientists were supportive, like Maxwell, Postman, and Proteus, but some other scientists were completely against that idea. And it is why people think that Postman uh, uh, went to suicide in 1906 because of the controversy. So, just to, see, to show you that controversy in science is not something new. Then there is Boolean motion. Um, you know also, also, also very well what is Boolean motion, and this is the original. 
light was coming off ground, which is in the museum in Chicago. And uh, this is what we see under the microscope. And uh, as we know, it's all that day. Well, uh, it's interesting that at the beginning in Brown, I thought that this movement was the secret of life. And we soon realized that well, any particle was uh, subject to the same movement, so uh, it had nothing to do with life. So my point now is Einstein. Uh, at the same time, Einstein was uh, interested to demonstrate the existence of atoms. But again, we could not see atoms, especially at, at the time. So the genius uh, of Einstein was trying to see if we can have a bridge between microscopic and macroscopic worlds. He done that for, uh, for the uh, paper published in 1905 on the relativity theory, which is projecting ourselves in a, in a world where the, uh, the speed is the speed of light. Well, what he used as a his PhD thesis, and then he published in the same year, 1905, he, he, he showed that uh, the Boolean motion and diffusion were uh, in fact the same phenomenon that was not clear at the time. And uh, his idea was to demonstrate that if we can measure diffusion coefficient uh, and link it to the theory of heat, that would demonstrate indirectly the presence of atoms. So, Basically, his idea was to, to demonstrate something at a microscopic level while observing something at the mass microscopic level. So, my point now is, uh, in 1984, let's see here, with more years, um, I was, I was, it was the beginning of MRI, and uh, you would get images like that. As a, if you are not a doctor, you can see that there is something wrong here. That's what we see. The scale is millimeter, but uh, as a uh, physician, we'd like to understand what's going on in the tissue at the microscopic scale. So my idea was that if there is a way to measure the Brunel motion of water, we might get some information. The water molecules will see obstacles and will give us some information about what they see. And what we're lucky was based on the work of Einstein, if we take the diffusion coefficient of water at the brain temperature, um, the displacement of the water molecules for free water, I mean not, not in tissue like that, but in free water, let's say 50 milliseconds, during that time molecules will move on a distance of about 50 micrometers. We are exactly at the right scale. By measuring diffusion of water in tissues, we get some information at the microscopic level. So it's like a polygray, virtual biopsy, and it is the same idea that actually used in 1905, trying to get some microstructure information from images which are acquired at the microscopic resolution. So how we do that? I don't again to bother you with these physical details, but instead of using a very homogeneous magnetic field, the magnetic field now will change, let's say from left to right or from top to bottom, whatever direction, this is what we call a gradient, and if molecules or water move, Along this gradient, the uh, phase, the phase that we get when we do the radio frequency excitation, will be will be lost, and this translates into a signal attenuation, which we can measure accurately to get uh, the idea of the diffusion coefficient. If molecules move a lot, we get a big signal attenuation. If they move only a little bit, so slow diffusion, the attenuation is less. That's easy. And so when I published the first paper in 1980. Five or six, it was received with some uh, surprise that how could we measure diffusion? But soon it became evident that uh, the potential was huge. And um, as I show you, it's used down stroke to make diagnosis <coughs> in the people and save lives, brain connectivity, cancer diagnosis, and brain functional MRI. And uh, um, also it's used early. The uh, explanation underlying what we see is not so well understood. And this is how the water, I will show you, might have a very important contribution. So it seems that cell swelling or anisotropy of water in, 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 white, in white matter in the brain and um, soil proliferation and so on are, are somewhat responsible for what we see. So that's what I'm going to show you. But the main point I'd like to make is that there are now about 
20, 20,000 articles published uh, using diffusion MRI. So if you keep uh, diffusion MRI in Google Scholar, so it's huge. It's used every day in many, many fields. But um, the mechanisms are still poorly understood. So just to show you that um, sometimes even if you want to understand something, and uh, it doesn't work, it doesn't mean that something is not useful. So I think it's something I don't know recently. So the very first application of diffusion MRI is acute stroke. Acute stroke, so this patient, in fact, I showed the photo earlier, has a stroke. What is a stroke? That means that there is a clot on an artery and the blood cannot go to the brain. So the brain tissue will die very quickly. We lose about 2 million of euros per minute when this occurs. And it's a disaster, it's the first common cause of death, the first cause by far long-term disability, the cost is huge socially, emotionally, and so on, and uh, there's nothing to do. Once this part of the brain is dead, the patient may get aphasic, not able to speak anymore, or hemiplegic, it's a disaster. So back in 1990, Mike Mosley, a friend of mine in UCSF, was using my method, diffusion MRI, in a model of a stroke in a cat, and what he discovered immediately after the clot had, uh, was formed, the diffusion coefficient of water was going down immediately. And, uh, and uh, so these are conventional images, MRI images, so you see one, two, four hours, nothing to see. While with diffusion MRI, it was obvious that something was going on. So this is now used every day in the hospitals. Um, this is a patient, for instance, who had a stroke. You see the uh, MRI images are not we don't see anything. With diffusion white imaging, we see clearly that there are two areas under the stroke. So the good news is that at the same time as diffusion MRI was used uh, for the first time in stroke, a company in the United States developed a drug called RTPA, which can dissolve uh, the clot. So if you have a, some symptoms of stroke today, you are rushed to the hospital in an emergency uh, department, and they will do MRI diffusion. If they see that, they will give you the RTPA, this sort of drug. And you, I've seen myself, so you have patient which arrive, who arrive with him in Pledia, and in, in just one minute, it's gone. Just one minute. Unfortunately, there are not so many patients uh, who can get everything, because uh, the symptoms are not always clear. If you have big pain here, you know that you may have a heart attack, and you know what to do. Or a stroke symptoms are not always so obvious. Anyway, my my uh, my lecture is not about stroke. It's to explain why we have diffusion as diffusion slowdown. So this is very clear. It's huge effect. 30 to 50 percent increase in diffusion. We know it's related to some swelling of the cells, but the mechanisms are still not clear at all. Second major application. It was discovered by the same a friend of mine. Mike Mosley using diffusion MRI in the early 1990s that diffusion of water is anisotropic in white matter. So um, if you are not a specialist of the brain, just remind you that neurons are essentially uh, located at the surface, what we call the gray matter, the cortex, and white matter is everything in between. So there are uh, connections, axons, we call them axons, connecting different regions. So it was discovered that water molecules which are diffusing, uh, um, the, the diffusion coefficient is, is less perpendicular to the fibers than in the direction of the fibers. So this could be understood from a mechanistic point of view. If you consider axons as cylinders, it's clear that water molecules have a harder time to, to go perpendicularly to the axons than in the direction of the axons. So it is a naive cartoon, and I believe that it doesn't explain everything, but still has got people had in mind. And back then, so uh, I was starting to lose some hair, as you can see, um, uh, we developed with colleagues at the United States a technique called diffusion tensor imaging, which we patented, to obtain images uh, to provide, uh, on a point-by-point -point basis, the orientation in space of the white <coughs> The idea that we measure diffusion in several directions, and in the direction where diffusion is the highest, we assume that it is the direction of the fibers. And we repeat that in many directions. And we can obtain images like that. And then using some 
um, uh, software, uh, we can, in mathematical algorithms, we can connect each point to trace uh, the connections. So this is something which was started in 1998 and which is now blooming. Uh, these are the images we get now. Um, NIH has given 50 million of dollars to establish the human brain connection. Uh, in Europe, we got only 2 million of uh, euros, but we were faster. This is, this is the atlas of brain connection obtained in one subject. We have now 100 of them. It takes about 15 minutes. And we can get uh, images of the brain connections uh, like that, uh, just in 15 to 20 minutes. And again, using water uh, uh, and the anisotropy of water diffusion in the brain. And we saw the uh, colleagues from MIT have obtained uh, uh, images in animal models with a resolution of 200 micrometers, and you see all these uh, circuits. So, just to show you that even if we don't understand what is in this bottle, uh, we can use water uh, to obtain a really, really interesting information how the brain works. It is now shown, for instance, that in, in some patients with schizophrenia, uh, the anatomy of the brain is normal. Um, the function of the brain is normal, they hear voices and the uh, uh, auditory cortices are activated. But what could be wrong are the connections between, for instance, the frontal and the temporal areas. We found also that in two months or four months old babies, well before they start speaking, uh, there is an asymmetry in the connection between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. You know, the left hemisphere is usually associated with language, so this comes very early in life because the connections are already established for that. The next stage um, is uh, how you see how the brain works, and that is what we call um, fMRI, functional MRI. So uh, this is a, a funny diagram, but it's not so far from the truth. For many, many years, the way we learned how the brain works was uh, by during surgery to, to punch some areas of the brain and see uh, what's what's in fact the patient would be not anesthetized. This is still used in fact, by the way, not in a such caricature way, but it is used. So it is possible today to obtain images of, of brain function. And so when you see the brain, for instance, you activate any parts of the brain, and, and especially the visual areas. So let me show you um, how it's done, and then we switch to a new method, which I developed a few years ago, where water is playing a very important role. So it's still water. This technique, which was invented by Seiji Ogawa, a Japanese friend, uh, is called all for blood oxygen level dependent fMRI. The idea is that um, this discovery name, um, red blood cells contain, contain hemoglobin, and hemoglobin contains an atom of iron, which in the, in the strong field of the magnetic of MRI uh, becomes magnetic. So, in, a, in short, we have to consider red blood cells as a tiny magnets. And when they circulate into the blood, uh, they will modify the field locally, and this will be uh, seen in the, in the MRI signal. But what is important to understand is this there is a coupling between blood flow, metabolism, and activation. So when we use parts of our brain, locally there is an increase in blood flow. So if you have an increase in blood flow, you change the magnetization of the water molecules because there is more blood <coughs> source going to the activation. So it has worked beautifully. Just to give you an example of where we are now, this guy in the magnet is playing this game with seashells, paper, and uh, stone. So he's moving the arm like that. Then, of course, with MRI, we can see changes in the magnetization of uh, the hydrogen nuclei in the motor cortex. The signal is analyzed by a computer and then sent to a robot, an artificial hand with some very small engines. And the, uh, the hand is just following what the, the guy is doing inside the magnet. The next step now, the guy is not doing anything, he's just thinking. And uh, we've shown, probably just 15 years ago now, or even more, that even by just thinking, you activate the brain in a very similar way. So this guy is just thinking about moving his hand, and you see the hand moving according to his thoughts. So that's what's done every day now, and this is something really confused for MRI. FMRI people, and just to show you how far uh, this can be used, this is a lady in a comatose state, 26 years old after her accident, no response, 
And uh, our um, colleagues, uh, the team of Dr. Owen, um, just thought about let's put this patient in the MRI scanner just to see. So they asked the lady, what's your name? Of course, nothing. But in the MR images, what they've seen is that the areas, which vocal areas which are known to be activated by language, were activated. So this lady was not only understanding the patient, but she was answering. So then she had, they asked her, could you imagine that you are playing the tennis? And nothing happens. Looking at the images, you see that some regions of the brain get activated the same, which are activated in normal people with the same thinking. Or could you think that you are moving in your house? You are just looking at the different rooms in your house. Different regions are activated, same as in normal people. So this now has been observed in about 20% of the patients in the vegetative state. And again, in order to see that, we use the magnetization of nuclei. And some people are communicating with those patients. For instance, they say, well, I can ask you a question. If you want to say yes, you think you play the tennis. If you want to say no, you think you navigate in your house. And, and then they get a yes no response and communicate with patients who are in vegetative state. Looks good, right? So it is good and it is heavily used now, but now I'd like to point out that there are some um, short, short uh, uh, pitfalls that I would like to, to address. And the reason for this increase in blood flow is not so clear. We don't know exactly the mechanism. Also, it's, we are not looking at neuronal activity, we are looking at something indirect. And the response is so much fuzzy, it takes about six seconds. Uh, between the beginning of the stimulation and the time the increase in blood flow gets at the peak, which of course is much lower than the brain works, and also the localization is not simple. So for, for years now, I have introduced a new idea that they have to use water diffusion MRI to obtain images of brain function, and, and this is something which could be related really to uh, circuit and neuronal activation. So this is the experiment that back in, 19, in 2005 with my Japanese colleagues. Um, so we used visual stimulation to so present light on and off. And with all fMRI, we see activation in the visual areas, it's no surprise. But what was surprising to some colleagues, not to me, because that's what I wanted to see, in the visual context, there is a very clear beautiful activation. And um, when we look at the curve, uh, we obtain this is ball, so again, as I said, this is a stimulation, 10 seconds. We see something which is related to the increase in blood flow. This is the end of the stimulation, and the peak occurs a little bit later. If we look at the diffusion signal now, what we see is that there is an increase in signal which translates into decreased diffusion. So, water diffusion goes down each time the brain is activated. But if you look at the time course now, what we see is that the, the change in water diffusion is much faster, starts much quicker, and ends immediately at the end of the stimulation. Something which points out to a uh, not a vascular uh, phenomenon, but something related really to neuronal activation, something which is related to the tissue. This was in 2005, 2006. Many, many of my colleagues have been skeptical, have looked for pitfalls. So I published uh, uh, this year a paper in PNS. Uh, this was shown in 2012, it was open to the this year. I, I think this is quite convincing. It's done in the right brain, and we have stimulated the, the pole, the right, and we call uh, it to uh, physiological signals with diffusion and ball. This is what we see. Activation of is observed with diffusion and with the ball method. No surprise. But if we give to the animal natural blue shape, which is a drug which is interfering with the uh, neurovascular activity, so there is no more increase in blood flow, you see that the ball response disappears, but the diffusion response is still there, which means that we are looking at something which is really related to uh, something going on in neurons, not vasculature. But is it? That's a big question. And that's maybe where I need to help, but I'll show you that it might be in the future of water. So this, I'm new here. So uh, I'm learning. So water diffusion is linked to tissue microstructure, and let me show you some uh, uh, 
explanation for that. So we were, according to this, we are switching from a paradigm which is a neurovascular protein to something which could be the neuromechanical cell swelling and diffusion of water. So let's see how it works. There is evidence now, it's very clear, that there is a relationship between decreased diffusion and cell swelling. I mentioned the stroke, so in stroke, cells swell, and, uh, and I said diffusion decreases. So this is very well established. If you change your smolality of the tissue uh, to reduce cell swelling, again, diffusion decreases. This is overstimulation using potassium ions, for instance. Again, what you see is decreased diffusion and cell swelling. So there is a relationship. We don't know so far how to explain it, but there is a relationship. On the other hand, it's very well established in the there are changes in the shape of the neurons when they get activated. This is, for instance, an experiment from Tasaki, where he's measuring the membrane position of, of neurons, and when the neuron gets activated, there is an action of the by getting easy bump on the membrane surface. So there, there, there are really mechanical effects. This is, uh, I go fast because that's not the point. With optical imaging, we can record also signals coming from the hippocampus, and when the cells are activated, you see a sharp response. That means the photons which are going to the tissue, they are deviated, they change angle. But when neurons get activated, the deviation is different, which means that something has changed in the structure of the tissue, so that the photons have to change and, uh, the course. And this is usually uh, understood as swelling occurring in the tissue. So you see, Activation is linked to cell swelling. Cell swelling is linked to decreased diffusion. So now we have to, to put everything into uh, coincidence or into phase, <laughs> and, and that's, that's not easy. So let me show you my, my ideas here. First, and that's why I'm so interested in, in, in your work, and especially what the Jerry has done. What is known now, very clearly, that we cannot explain water diffusion in tissue by caution. So it's not controversial. That's very clear. Everybody is not even controversial. If you if diffusion was caution, uh, we will get this part that I want to explain again a straight line. It's not a straight line, it's curved, it's curved. So one way, one way, that's the only, not the only one, and to explain this curvature is to consider rules of water, water molecule diffusing with slow diffusion position and water diffusing. Uh, for some years, people have considered that whether well, that could be the ETRA and the extra cell. This is all. Now there is clearly evidence. I, I don't have time to explain why, I will give an explanation later. It is not possible. So if we assume that there are a slow and fast components, which is again controversial, uh, we have to find something else. What is clear is that uh, when diffusion goes down, for instance, in stroke, it's not really diffusion which is going down. What we see now is that the fraction the pool of slow diffusion increases. So it's a balance between the slow and the fast pools which is changing. So we thinking doesn't change water diffusion per se. What we're thinking is just changing the balance between slow and fast diffusing water. So is that how is that possible? Uh, I looked at the literature and for some time I was interested in this idea that next to charge surfaces in certain membrane transfer surfaces, uh, water molecules could be organized in such a way that here you have a layer of slow diffusing water. This is also controversial. Some people think that it will be very, very small. Some other people think that it will extend very far. It's a mystery. So this is the model which I'm now using to explain our results. Uh, and it works very well, but it is controversial. Um, next to the membrane, there could be a layer of slow water diffusion. So in turn, you increase the surface of the, of the cells, you increase this uh, fraction, and you have of all a decrease in diffusion, and you change the max. And this is a, a, a molecular simulation of uh, obtaining in Kyoto of uh, water molecules interacting with the membrane. So my obvious question, and this is how I met uh, Jerry, that's by internet, I learned about this uh, Exclusion zone next to the membranes or surfaces with charges. So, my, my question is um, 
is the slow diffusion pool equivalent to easy water? That's my question to you. I don't have a response. According to what I learned this week, the easy zone is huge, like hundreds of micrometers, and what I need here is just tens of nanometers. So, I'm not sure. Anyway, so the idea now is that when we activate the neurons, there is some swelling, I'll show you where exactly there is swelling, and this leads to increased water ordering, and uh, this leads to the sort of expansion. So, to, to prove even more that, we've done experiments recently, so this is the model, this is a membrane with water molecules which could be more structured. We should, we should consider also the cytoskeleton, which is very dense here. And here we have proteins with hydration uh, water, expansion with bulk water. So we have used this acute animal in Bridger, California, which is very famous because it was used by Kendall to, to get his Nobel Prize on memory. The, the beauty of this animal uh, is that we do all There are 20,000 only. Uh, we have one hundred millions. So we know all of them, we know where they are located, and uh, many other people. So we can really see. So we have, uh, we are lucky because we have a 17 test magnet. It's the highest fixed rate for MRI in the world. It's used for small animals. And we measure the diffusion of water inside the neurons, inside each individual neuron, and at the tissue level. Big surprise. Not for me, but for my colleagues. When we measure the diffusion, and we it uses some swelling, and we look at the uh, uh, tissue level, we see diffusion of water goes down, exactly as I said earlier. But we measure diffusion inside the cells, it is going on, and a lot. So how could we explain that inside the cells there is increased diffusion and the tissue level of decreased diffusion? So, uh, because we are also the scientists, we need something a little bit more simple. We use water, which is a, a drug which is interfering with the sodium potassium pump of the membranes. Same effect. At the tissue level, decreased water diffusion, but inside each individual neuron, increased diffusion. So, what is the difference between tissue and intracellular water? It's the water next to the membranes. So, at this stage, uh, that's what we think. That um, in order to explain these uh, those results, uh, we have to consider that uh, there is water next to the membranes. It's only a difference, a pool between the two, uh, the two experiments we've done, two measurement kinds we've done, and there must be some water molecules uh, interacting with the membranes uh, responsible for this decrease in water diffusion. So, uh, this is a cartoon now. We measure it so during activation in the human brain. There is 0.5 change the balance between slow and fast water diffusion. So I use the term freezing, it looks like that some water is freezing and one water means that this is the increase of the water next to the membranes. However, we should not consider that this funny focus in uh, in uh, as cells are balanced that's not that's not so in fact um, Neurons have thousands of dendrites, and of the dendrites, they are smart, so very small um, um, uh, physicals, if you like, uh, which are dynamic, so they swell, they shrink all the time. This is highly dynamic. So the swelling would appear at this level, and based on the calculation from Jerry's book, uh, I explained that, well, when cells get activated, um, the cytoskeleton has to be very bottle for. If we go to the cytoskeleton, there is no more activation of the insults. So the cytoskeleton, the, the membrane of the, of the cell membrane will treat the surface. Cytoskeleton also will open up, which will expose more negative charges. And this is how water molecules can get sucked up into the cells and also get more structure because they are close to those negative charges. So the hypothesis I'm putting forward now is electromagnetic activation is linked to thermal one expansion and the cytoskeleton and increase of water ordering. And how is it possible? There's no creation of membrane. This is a very famous dish in, uh, in Japan and uh, it's funny how it is obtained uh, with Yuga. So, and in fact, we have to consider that the cell spikes, so that the membrane is folded. So it's just an expansion, unfolding, folding, folding. So it's not no creation of the membrane. But an interesting point is that if there is freezing, 
Uh, they should be production of it. That was also finished. And um, maybe as it is, it was a bit like just grown. We have measured also the refractory index of water itself, and we see that during activation, then in the cell swelling, there is a change in the uh, refractory index, which could be also related to um, uh, change in water structure. So this idea that water structure in has a role in brain function is not mine, it's not new. It started long ago, and so I'm sure you know the work of uh, Linus Pauli, and uh, where he showed this issue is proposed that the effect of xenon, for instance, and some anesthetic agents was uh, explained by the dynamics of water molecules and interaction with normal potentials. You know, of course, uh, um, Peter Agri, who discovered aquaporins, and uh, aquaporins are very smart because they, are, they break hydrogen bonds uh, in order for water molecules to go one by one to the water. <coughs> And uh, there are many aquaporins which have been discovered. There are no, no so far, there is no aquaporin on your own, but there are many on your own uh, astrocytes. And recently, it has been pointed out that uh, some drugs which, for which the uh, function was not understood are linked to aquaporins, drugs which are used for epilepsy, for instance, or drugs which are used uh, for mind. So, clearly, uh, movement of water to the membrane are, are important. So this is the last uh, uh, slide, and um, I think we have to consider water, which is 90% of the molecules we have in our brain, not only as a passive, uh, a passive uh, molecule to understand the brain. I didn't talk today about the positive emission tomography, but again, people have used radioactive water. With more than from a while, we use water which has been somewhat magnetized, in fact, hydrogen in the right now what I'm trying to convey as a message is that water might be an active player for brain activation. So let me give you some uh, uh, crazy ideas. So water might have a role in the cell depolarization action potentials, as I explained. Um, I said that during um, activation of neurons there is increase in blood flow. We don't know why. Egyptians. We are considering that the brain was just a radiator, so they, they, they used to take the brain out of the movies because it's a little considered but it's just all okay. So, uh, according to what they said, if this is true, uh, when neurons get activated they get uh, swelling, there must be an increase in temperature. And yes, it has been measured. There is a, there is a temperature increase when activated neurons. So my proposal is that maybe the increase in blood flow that we see it's just to cool down the brain where it is activated. And uh, to tease my Japanese colleague who invented cold fMRI, so if you make a mistake, you should have called it cold fMRI. Yeah. And uh, so it's not really for energy. And the last provocative that I have is that physics is always reversible. So if you activate the source, you change the shape. If you change the shape, you activate. So I consider that many neuron spines are piezo and electron users. And that means that if you activate some neurons in a cluster of neurons, as they change the shape, all the cells will feel immediately this mechanical effect and get depolarized. So the propagation will be much faster than using synaptic transmission. That's what I call wireless connectivity. So I don't want to say that we don't have synapses and so on, because they are very important. But it might be that within as cells which are touching each other, this mechanism is being put out, and once information has been processed, then it is exported to uh, other regions using energy transmission. Okay, and uh, just, to, just to, to show you that in order to continue exploring this field, we are getting now an illegal consistent just level of magnet for, um, for people. So it is the first in the world, very powerful system. It's almost ready it to be delivered to the hospital in less than one year, hopefully. And uh, uh, so it's, uh, it's really a uh, map of, uh, of uh, physics and technology. So you see there are uh, some pockets which are put together, and, uh, and the magnet will be very big, five meter in length. Um, and uh, we have to produce uh, uh, heat in the epithelium on site to cool down, down this magnet to 1.8 Kelvin. It's really uh, very important. Thank you.